have any requests. Great. Okay. I was like, is Maddie going to say something? Um, but no. Um, great. Uh, okay. So two blocks, a blanket. Um, yeah. And we'll get started. We're going to start um, with no props. So we're just going to start cross-legged sitting on our mats. And I'm just facing this way to face you, but feel free to sit like long ways on your mat because the next thing we'll do, we'll stick our legs out. So you can be long ways. Um, and try to sit with your non-dominant way of sitting cross-legged. So my instinct is to sit with my right foot in front, but try to sit with, I'm gonna sit with my left foot in front, try to sit with the opposite one. And then just bring your hands down, face down on your knees and find yourself sitting in the middle of your sits bones. So you're not too far forward, you're not leaning forward, you're not hunched back in a chair like we typically are during our week sitting on our computers. You're right down with your sits bones rooted down into the ground and energy going out through the crown of your head. Cool. So just bring your eyes to a close and feel free to Keep your eyes closed this whole time as we're seated here. Feel free to open them if you need to look at me for what I'm doing, but if you can keep them closed, that's always great. And listen to your breath. Notice its speed. Notice what part of your body is moving as you're breathing. Is it your low belly? Is it your chest? And once you feel settled, you're gonna bring your right ear towards your right shoulder and then bring your right hand on top of your left ear and gently help um, pull your right ear to your right shoulder a little bit more. You can place your left hand down on the mat if that feels nice to give even more of an opening to the left side of the neck. And just keep breathing. You can pretend to yawn as you breathe out and see if that gives you more of a sensation in your jaw and your neck. One more breath here. And then let your arm go, your right arm go as you exhale, bring it down onto the floor. Bring your left ear over to your left shoulder right hand on top of, or left hand on top of right ear and gently help yourself. Bring it down a little bit closer. Constantly thinking of bringing your right shoulder down and back so your right shoulder isn't coming up towards your ear because we're creating a lot of space between the ear and the shoulder. Take a few more cycles of breath. Pretend to yawn. Or actually yawn, depending how tired you are. On your next exhale, come back to center. Once again, you can still leave your eyes closed. And lift your left arm up towards your left ear. And then take a side bend over to the right. So your right hand can stay on the ground. You can bring your right forearm down to the ground. Most important thing here is that your left butt still stays connected to the ground. So if your left butt starts coming up off the ground, then just gently pull your torso back up to center a little bit. Chin can come up to your left armpit. One more cycle of breath, reaching your left fingers out. Exhale, come back up through center, left hand down, right arm up, side bend over to the left. Nice, chin to armpit, both sit, sitting bones down. Notice if your feet are like randomly clenching, try to relax your feet, ankles, toes, calves, shins, knees. On your next exhale, come back up through center. Find your sit, seat, again, sitting down straight tall. Place your left hand on your right knee. 
place your right hand back behind you and just gently twist yourself over to the right. Chin is looking over your right shoulder, equal weight through both sits bones. Your left elbow can come to a bend if that feels nice to help you twist more, but you're still thinking of shooting down through both sits bones and then shooting up through the crown of the head. So your body is still in one straight line. One more breath. Exhale, come back through center, right hand, left knee, left hand behind you. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist yourself over to the left. Once again, notice your toes, are you clenching them? Notice your jaw, your forehead. Try to feel the movement or whatever is happening where it's supposed to happen and not in a tangential part of the body. Try to relax what's not being part of the pose. One more breath. Exhale, come back through center. One more breath, close your eyes, hands face down on your knees. Exhale, let it all out. And then bring your legs in front of you. So find your legs at hip width distance. Feet are flexed, toes are facing up towards the sky and have a slight bend to your knees. So that helps you sit up really tall. Sorry, I'm just moving the block so you can see my back. But both sits bones shooting down so that the energy can go up through the crown of the head. Hands come down on either side of you. And then just begin to walk yourself a little bit forward. And here is part one of you can use your blocks. Feel free to make yourself a tower for your head to come rest on. But try to keep your knees bent, knees tracking over toes. Toes are facing up towards the sky. If you can grab your feet, awesome. If you want to stay up tall here because you already feel it in your hamstrings, that's also great. Just do whatever feels nice. And then let your head relax once you've come to wherever you are. Yeah, so if your head is on a block, you can massage it, rock it side to side. I'm just gonna switch the view here. Okay, cool. Take a few more cycles of breath. If you're feeling gravity help you and you think you can straighten your legs a little bit more or go down a little bit more, go for it. And on your next exhale, Bring yourself back up, sitting up tall, and then bring your right foot in to kiss, I guess, the left inner thigh. So you're kind of looking like a tree pose, but seated on the ground, still keeping a bend in the left knee. And once again, sit up super tall, keeping this straight line in your spine, just walk yourself forward. And once you feel like you start to hunch and round, that's when you know when to stop. Same thing here, relax your head, neck, jaw. You can bring your eyes to a close again, just getting into the backs of the legs. And if you wanna grab your foot, go for it. Let gravity help you just melt down, opening muscles and joints in the body that you might not have touched in a while. And listen to your breath. On your next exhale, walk yourself back up and just take a little bit of a slide. So your body's now facing kind of a diagonal and, but your feet kind of stayed the same. The only thing I did was I brought my right foot closer in towards um, like the right side. Cool. So knee stays bent again. If you want, you can place a block on the lowest height or your, your book right in front of your knee, place your left forearm on it, and then reach your right arm up and over, coming into another side bend. Nice. And if you don't have a block or you don't wanna put a block there, feel free to just put your forearm on the ground. But really think of the equal and opposite forces between your upper arm and your left thigh. So as you push your left thigh forward, you push back with your arm to allow you to give you a twist so your chin can look up at the sky. 
One more cycle of breath. Leg is still bent. Left toes are facing up. Exhaling, come back up to sit. Place your right hand down behind you and swing your left arm around and lift your hips up just for a bit of a counter stretch. We call this stargazer, looking up at the skies. You can honestly do whatever you want with your arm. And then let your butt come back down. Bring your right leg back to hip width distance. With your left, you can shake him out. And then we'll take a hot sack back in normal Paschimottanasana, forward fold seated. So come into whatever that looks for you, looks like for you, grabbing your feet, placing your hands, sitting up. And just breathe. You can bring your eyes to a close. Take one deep inhale and exhale, trying to access all of the space in your low belly as you inhale. Exhaling, come back up to sit up tall. Bring your left foot in to kiss your right inner thigh. I guess that's what I'm going to call this from now on. And then bring a slight bend into your right knee and once again, bend over. Keeping the integrity of the spine. And if this feels like um, kind of painful in your left knee or something like that, feel free to just bend it a little bit less. Yeah, I know there won't be um, contact, but if you have pain, definitely don't push through bad pain in order to be like, I want to look like this person or something like that. So do whatever feels best for you. One more cycle of breath. Exhaling, come back up to sit up tall. Same thing on this side. Sorry, my back will be to you. But come into that more of a diagonal thing where your torso is facing that way away from your right leg. Slight bend into your right knee again. Block can come in front of the knee if you have it or if you want it. Otherwise, forearm down. And then lift your left arm up and over your ear. Side bend on this side. Pressing your right thigh into your right arm and vice versa. Equal and opposite forces. Chin is glancing up. Both feet are engaged. A few more cycles of breath. Reaching for something in front of you with your left hand. Still sitting down on both sits bones. On your next exhale, bring yourself back up to sit. Place your left hand behind you. Swing your right arm around. Place the right sole of the foot down, lift your hips up, stargazer. Let that go. Both feet come out, shake them out. One last Pashimo, see if you can take a deeper version of the pose now that we're doing it for the third time. See if any of that opening has helped you get a little bit lower. Finding a connection with your chest and your thighs and your armpits and your knees if you can. Let your head just drop. One more cycle of breath. Exhaling, come back up to sit and cross your legs. We're back in cross-legged. So grab for your blocks and you're going to place them kind of like right in front of where you were. So you can move out of that cross-legged position to um, come into this. So they're kind of like a third of the way up your mat. You'll also want your blanket for this um, just because it feels better. <laughs> Pure comfort. Um, so your blocks or books will be on like their medium height. So you would see the side of the book if you're using books. And then you can place your blanket on top of these. Cool. And then you're gonna place your hands in front of this. Bring kind of where like your lower belly is, right below your low belly and kind of on the crease of your low belly. So your hip crease, I guess. Bring that to the top of the blocks and then lower yourself down. So there's a few options here. 
if you're like, what is happening? Feel free to just stay up on your forearms. That's totally fine. If you love this, you can make a palm pillow with your hands and then place your forehead on it. Or if you want a bit of a shoulder opener, you can place your arms out down into like a goal post thing and place one ear to the ground and I'll let you know when to switch. So take whatever variation you want. Helps get into the digestion. And just notice what it's like to breathe into something under you. You can bring your eyes to a close. Noticing which parts of the body are touching the ground and what's not. Notice if you're feeling a little mini heartbeat in a part of your stomach and just listen to it. You can switch with cheek is on the ground if you took that variation. And just keep breathing. Notice if your breath is speeding up in this pose or if it's slowing down. And that's just information for how this pose is affecting your body. A few more cycles of breath. Seeing if you can direct the breath down into your low belly allow for that pressure to increase and then decrease as you breathe. On your next inhale, place your hands underneath your shoulders from wherever you were, press yourself up, and then bring yourself back into a child's pose. So place your forearms, elbows on the blocks, let your hands just dangle and let your head dangle in between your forearms or your upper arms. You can shake your head yes and no. Notice what it feels like to breathe without this in front of you or without that pressure on your belly. A lot of the twists or things like this that we do, they kind of constrict one part of your body, kind of as if there's like, a, I don't know what this is called, but like a part of the hose that's like twisted weirdly so no water can get out. But then once you undo that crease, crinkle, whatever you want to call it, it allows for more water to flow through that hose. So it's similar in your body where you twist it and then you let it go and there's more space, there's, mo there's more surface area, more volume available for blood to flow, for water to move, for all that stuff to move through your body, which is one of the benefits of twists and putting pressure in certain places and then relieving it. On your next exhale, you're gonna bring yourself up onto your shins, cool. This block setup can kind of stay where it is for now. So place your hands in down in front of it and probably not directly under your shoulders, a little bit out. Tuck your toes, lift your knees and come into a downward facing dog. So I'm gonna probably walk my hands a little bit forward and then my feet come a little bit forward too, just so I'm not totally touching this block thing but just find your down dog, have a slight bend in your knees. Cool. And from there on your next inhale, bring your body forward and through to an upward facing dog, keeping your toes tucked. Your chest is moving through your arms and you have this block thing there as like a little shelf for your legs to rest on, but you should still feel energy moving through your legs as if you're in a plank pose. One more cycle of breath. Exhaling, bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog, and take that on your own time. Inhaling forward and through. Exhaling, bend the knees, stick the butt up. Take it two more times. 
however slow or fast that you wanna go. And feel free to undulate through the spine, bringing more movement into what you're doing. And once you've finished your last two, we'll meet in a slightly bent knee down dog. And then place your knees down on the ground. Move all of this stuff off to the side in whichever which way. Bring the blocks um, towards the front of the mat just because we'll probably use them and that's closer to your hands. <laughs> so, and then come to an all fours position. Cool. From here, immediately, you're gonna flip your wrists around 180 degrees. And if that feels unbearable, just flip them around to 90 degrees. Hands underneath shoulders, knees are underneath your hips. And then take any movement that you want here. So you can take like a cat cow circle variation. If you just wanna take a normal cat cow, feel free. You can circle the head. You can just move your hips right and left. Just take whatever movement you want here that feels good on your wrists and on your legs. Beginning to just open all the different joints of the body we haven't hit yet. Cool. Really trying to keep the wrists parallel to the front of the mat. And if you took circles, if you took circles, make sure that you go both in the right and left direction or clockwise and counterclockwise. Just trying to get all the sides. Take three more cycles of breath, doing whatever you're doing. Nobody's watching you. Great. And on your next exhale, bring your hands back the normal way. Strongly press them down underneath your hands or underneath your shoulders. Great. Place your hands out about a palm print in front of where they are. Tuck your toes. We're coming back into our downward facing dog. Awesome. Find your breath here, find your measure. You wanna have your hands in line with your shoulders, feet in line with your hips. One way to measure out hips with distance is to turn out a foot, make sure the heel lines up with the toes on both sides. Slight bend to the knees and try to stick your butt up. Imagine that you are sitting on the ground in that L-shaped position, Paschimottanasana, like we did in the beginning. On your next inhale, Lift your right leg up to the sky. Exhale, bring your right foot to your right thumb. Find a connection between your chest, your thigh, your right armpit to your right knee. Leaving your back leg up, imagine that you're pressing your left foot in towards the wall behind you. And then reach your arms forward, out, and up. See, find your balance. <laughs> We're in a high lunge. Place your left hand on your left hip and then reach up and over to the left. Yeah, so just getting into a side bend in your high lunge. Your arms can do whatever you want, whatever helps you balance. Try to find a gaze out in front of you so you don't fall. Exhale, come back to center, right hand on your right hip, lift your left arm up and then reach up and over to the right. Pressing forward with your hips, keeping your balance. Imagine your left foot is pressing up a wall still, so it has a 90 degree angle to the floor. There's weight down through all, all parts of both feet. Keep your balance, I'm wobbling. And then come back to center. Reach your right arm up too. Bring a little bit of a bounce to your back leg and then step yourself up to a chair pose. So feet are still at hips width distance. You can do that same turn in, turn out thing with your feet if you wanna measure it. Look down, notice where your knees are going and then stick your butt out, keep your arms up by your ears. One more cycle of breath, bend a little bit lower and then exhale, hook your thumbs, lift them up, bend a little bit back and then let your arms drop, come into a forward fold, interlace your hands behind your back and let them hang over. 
Have a slight bend in your knees. We love bending the knees. <laughs> Probably say that the most in any class. And really just let your hands fall over you, opening up the shoulders. Coming back to your breath, you may have quickened a bit. Bring your hands down to your lower back and then just let them dangle, coming into a forward fold. Your eyes can come into a close. Let your low back release, like your head release. On your next inhale, place your hands down and then step yourself back to a downward facing dog. Bring your body forward and through to an up dog and back to a down dog as you inhale and exhale. And then on your next inhale, lift your left leg up, down dog split. Exhale, bring your left foot to your left thumb. Find that same connection, right angle in your left leg and then reach your arms forward, out and up. Cool. Really imagine your right foot is pressing into a wall. It really helps with keeping you stable. Right hand on your right hip. Reach your left arm up and over to the right. And one side might be easier to balance on. Still trying to find that um, 90 degree angle in the front knee. Next, exhale, come back to center. Left hand, left hip, right arm up, up and over to the left. And enjoy the opening of the front of the right hip. Really think of making a crescent moon over to the left instead of a little crunched, I don't know what shape. If someone has a shape, feel free to share with me at the end. <laughs> One more breath. Come back to center. Bring your left arm up by your ear. Find your balance, get bouncy on the back knee and step yourself up to a chair pose. Right arm, left arm shooting out from the shoulders. Your gaze can be down and out in front of you. Just get into the legs, letting them hold you up. See if you can bend a little bit lower. One more breath. Exhale. Hook your thumbs the opposite way. Come up to a nice little back bend release. Great. On your next exhale, let your arms just fall. Let your body fall over. Interlace your hands the weird way and then let them fall over your head. Opening up the shoulders. Notice where the weight is in your feet. Feel free to rock a little bit forward and back to find that midpoint and side to side. One more breath. Let that go. Let your hands come down to the ground. And once again, just dangle as if you're a wet noodle. We love wet noodles. Just kidding, this is the only time in class it is good to be a wet noodle. One more breath. Placing your hands down to the ground and step or hop yourself back to a downward facing dog. Take an up dog and down dog if you want to, otherwise we'll just meet in our down dog. Cool. Bring your body forward and through to a plank pose and then gently lower yourself down. So your elbows are gonna come in towards you and you're gonna go down in one line. And if you're like, I don't wanna do that, you can place your knees down and then lower yourself down. Either way, we'll all meet down, forehead on the ground, hand underneath shoulders, relying on our bellies. And then bring your hands to a palm pillow underneath your forehead. Reach out with your right toes, lengthening your right leg, lift it up and down. Reach out through the left toes with the left leg, lift it up and down. And then rock your hips from side to side. 
Cool. From here, you're gonna reach your left arm out alongside your ear, forehead comes down on the ground, and then grab for your right ankle with your right foot, <laughs> with your right hand, sorry. And as you inhale, you're gonna lift your left arm, your left leg, and then your chest, neck, and head up. So inhaling up for a half boat pose. This is also a nice little quad stretch. Looking down and out in front of you. If your leg doesn't come off the ground, that's totally fine. Just have that energy there. Exhale, come back down. We'll take this one more time, take a little breather. On your next inhale, lift your arm, lift your chest, neck, head. Pressing your foot into your hand, hand into your foot, equal and opposite. One more breath. Exhale, let that go. Let your leg go. Come back to that palm pillow and shake out your hips from side to side. Beautiful. Same thing, other side. Right arm comes straight out. Left hand grabs for the left ankle. Trying to keep your knees pretty close together so they're parallel lines and they wouldn't intersect or something. And on your next inhale, lift arm, lift neck, chest, head, foot, upper thigh. And you can press down strongly with the top of the right foot to help bring you up. One more breath. Exhale, let it go. Bringing the forehead down to the ground, taking a breath. One more time, lifting arm, chest, neck, head, knee, foot press into hand, hand press into foot. One more breath, down and out. Let that go. Cool. Palm pillow for yourself. Take whatever you need. You can bring both feet towards your butt and rock your legs from side to side. Nice. Shaking it out. Bring your legs long and down behind you. Now, instead of bringing your hands underneath your shoulders, you're going to bring your elbows underneath your shoulders, coming into Sphinx Pose. So just take a few cycles of breath here, strongly pressing down through the forearms and the hands. Feeling a nice back bend, tops of the feet pressed down into the ground. And when you're ready, tuck your toes and come into a forearm plank. Great. We won't stay here that long. One more cycle of breath, bodies in one long line. And then begin to walk your feet in towards your elbows coming into dolphin pose. Bending your knees, forearm dog, whatever you wanna call it, a variation of down dog. Pressing your butt up to the sky, bending your knees, sticking your butt up. And then however gracefully you want, come into a downward facing dog. Nice. One more breath here. Then on your next inhale, lift your right leg up to the sky. And then bring your right foot to your right thumb. Place your back knee down, untuck the back toes. Another good option right now to use the block, you can place it underneath your left hand or you can keep your left hand on the ground. You're gonna kick your left foot in towards your butt and then reach your right arm around to grab it. Cool. You can also keep your left hand on the ground. That's totally fine. Looking over your right shoulder or straight ahead or down and out in front of you, whatever feels best with your neck. Notice this. 
what your knee is doing. Make sure that it's following your toes. Right shoulder is down away from the ears. One more breath. Gently let go of your left foot. Swim your right arm over, place it on the inside of your right foot. Move the block and then heel toe your right foot over to the edge of your mat and then turn your foot out about 45 degrees. So your right toes are on the ground, your heel is on the mat, coming into lizard. And from here, take some circles with your hips to the right. Nice. Take some circles to the left. Just getting into the hips. And then you can come into any variation of lizard you want. You can stay like this. You can bring your forearms down to the ground. You can bring your forearms down onto blocks. Whatever feels good to you. We'll only be here for a few moments. But see if you can relax the other parts of your body where you don't feel as much sensation right now. This is a big hip opener, but we don't want to start tensing our toes or our fingers or our eyeballs because we're trying to open our hips. Keep breathing. As you exhale, feel a release of tension, of holding something that could otherwise be opening. Shoulders away from the ears. And then place your hands down, back down on the ground. Place your right hand on your right knee and then just gently twist yourself to the right. Yeah, this is the right side. <laughs> Looking up, diagonally away from you, shoulder is still down, still pressing forward with the hips. And your left hand could be on a block here too, if that would feel nice for you. On your next exhale, place your right hand back down, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, step the right foot back to a plank pose. Inhale here, exhale, bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Very nice. On your next inhale, lift your left leg up to the sky. Exhale, bring your left foot to your left thumb. Place your back knee down, untuck the back toes, keeping the integrity of both legs. Use a block or not underneath your right hand. Kick your right foot to your right butt and then reach your left arm around. Still wanting a good 90 degree angle with the left knee. Shoulders down and back. And if you can't lift, um, or if you can't reach your left foot or your back foot, whatever it is, just come to a twist with like your left hand on the lower on your lower back. You'll still get a good twist out of it. One more breath here. As you exhale, swim the left hand forward. Watch your left hand. Place it on the inside of the left foot. Heel, toe, your left foot out to the left, toes on the ground, heels on the mat, 45 degree angle, looking out to whatever's over there, <laughs> and then circles with your hips. Bending a little bit more and less into the front knee, and then circle the other way. You can circle your head as you do this too, if that feels nice. Imagine you're a little lizard slithering through the desert. Cool. Coming back to neutral. And then take whatever variation you want to on this side. It could be different than the other side. It could be exactly the same. Whatever feels good for you. One hit might feel crazy and the other one might be so open that you could do anything. So. We try to have symmetry on both sides, which is why we like doing non-dominant things sometimes in yoga, like how we started seated in a weird way. But 
our bodies are asymmetrical, whether we like it or not. So we might as well embrace it. And as you're here, still notice what your spine is doing, keeping the integrity of it as if you were sitting up tall, like in all of those opening forward folds. And you can sway from side to side if that feels nice. One more breath. Moving away any props you had, if you had them or use them. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee and step it back to a plank. Inhale here, exhale, bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. And what we all want right now, bring your knees down as wide as the mat, bring your toes to touch, sit yourself back into a wide knee child's pose. Let your forehead rest on the ground. Bring your eyes to a close. Hands, arms coming straight out the shoulders, maybe even a little bit wider to take up more space. Let your body just melt down. Almost as if like you're collapsing down, but collapsing gracefully. But you just let all the tension go in all the parts of your body. Reaching for your heels with your butt as your arms reach forward. Beautiful. So we'll take one more down dog just for fun. So place your hands down, come back to your down dog. And if you want, you can lift your right leg up Bend the knee, open up the hip, and then let your right foot come down to the ground and come into Boston Air Pod. Come into a uh, flip dog. But if you don't want to do this, you can just stay there with um, your bent knee, opening up the hip, okay, pressing your hips up towards the sky. And then swim your right hand back down, lift your right leg up, place it down, take a flow, up dog, down dog, I'm watching out for any props on either side, lift your left leg up, bend the knee, open up the hip, feel free to stay here and make sure your shoulders stay in one line, or you can flip your dog, lifting your left arm up, pressing your hips up, feet are in the same line, and exhale, or stay here a little bit longer. I know we stayed a bit longer on the other side. Coming back to your dog when you're ready, take one more deep inhale and exhale. And then bring your body forward and through to a plank pose and lower yourself down in one line all the way to the ground. Cool. Find your palm pillow and let yourself rest, rocking your hips from side to side. Beautiful. On your next inhale, hug both feet in towards your butt. Grab for your right ankle with your right hand. Grab for your left ankle with your left hand. And as you push your feet into your hand, that's what makes you lift your chest, neck, head, and your legs up off the ground, coming into a full bow pose. And we'll stay here for three breaths, inhaling deeply into the belly, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale on your own time. Feel free to come out of it if you've finished your three. Bringing yourself back to a palm pillow and rocking your hips from side to side. We'll take that one more time just because it's always good to know what we're doing and then trying it again. So kick both feet in towards your butt. Grab for your right foot with your right hand, left foot with your left hand. And as you inhale, lift everything up. 
beautiful. Three more breaths. Using your breath as your stopwatch. Breathe faster if you wanna get out of it. Breathe slower if you wanna stay. And after your third breath, just let everything go, melting into the ground. Back to wet noodle pose. Just do whatever. Let your legs and arms really have nothing holding them up because the ground is there for you. Cool. Bring your feet together, bring your legs together. Bring your hands back underneath your shoulders and press yourself back into a child's pose. If you want, you can bring your hands to cup your heels so you're in a little ball. Just take a few more breaths here. And then come to sit up on your shins. Cool. So we're gonna move into a headstand practice. So if you know that you don't wanna do this in the center of the room, feel free to definitely move towards a wall and then use a wall to come up against. Or I'll show like different ways to stop on your way. So if you wanna just stop in one of those, you can totally do whatever you want. If you have your own practice and you already know how to get into it, by all means, otherwise, here we go. So I always like to start from here and I do this kind of every time that I ever do a headstand. Then I'll come into like a weird sphinx pose where I'm kind of in like a forearm sphinx pose. Then I'll grab for opposite elbows. And then from there, then I know that I have a good measure of where like my elbow should be and where my arm should be and then I let my hands come down to meet in the middle. So elbows to meet. I'm gonna interlace my hands and then let both of my pinkies come down to the ground. And then I'm just gonna bring my body over and not where your forehead is, is gonna come to the ground. It's really like the top of your head. So where the energy was shooting up as we're sitting down, that's what's gonna come down to the ground. So we have our little cupped thing with our hands, our interlaced hands. I'm gonna place the crown of my head down onto the ground. I'm gonna tuck my toes and I'm gonna lift my knees. And if you're like, I don't wanna do anything more than this, super duper, this is totally fine. Have a slight bend in your knees, really have more weight through the forearms and that's great. And you can stay here and you can come in and out of it. You can do whatever you want. If you're like, I can do more, you can come into an egg pose. So this is called egg pose, I guess, for what it looks like. And if you're like, I can do more, then you're gonna lift your legs up to the sky. And you can stay here for as long as you want. You can come down. If you're super advanced, you can do a bunch of weird things with your legs but really have the weight in the forearms and not so much the head. The forearms are really what's holding me up, which is much easier said than done. And as you come out of it, you can kind of do what I just did where you step down with one leg and step down with another. Try not to um, like jump up or down. Try to like walk yourself up, come into the egg pose and then come back down. Um, and feel free to unmute if you have a specific question or anything. But yeah, just take it on your own time for a few more rounds. It's always good to practice a headstand. It's nice to do an inversion and see something from a different perspective. It's the main reason for inversions. And if you have a friend with you and you wanna help spot them, you can also do that. So I don't know if that's what Anna is doing with her friend, but maybe. <laughs> cool. When you're ready, come back down into a child's pose. Forehead down on the ground. Knees are basically together, but 
if they're not touching, it's okay. And from there, just bring your hands underneath your chin as if you're posing for a five-year-old photo shoot or watching television. I've definitely watched TV like this before, but not recently. Cool. This just helps release your jaw, your neck. And feel free to give yourself a little bit of a neck massage as you're sitting here in this position too, just to release it all. Cool. Relax your jaw, relax your tongue, relax your forehead. That was your first time ever doing a headstand. Great job, whatever version you did. It doesn't come overnight. You have to practice that for a while. So you'll get there if it's a goal of yours. And if not, then you'd never have to do a headstand again. <laughs> cool. From here, just come however you want onto your backs. So feet are planted down. We're on your back, knees are bent. And then heel toe your feet out to either side of the mat. Your knees are knocked in towards one another. Hands are on the low belly. And once again, just relax. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Breathing deep into the low belly. Imagining there's a balloon there that you fill up each time you inhale. Cool. Bring your feet back underneath your knees so your knees are hip width distance. And then you're gonna grab for either one or two of your block slash book things. You're gonna find it on its lowest height or its middle height, if that is still a stable height for it, and then place it underneath your lower back or your sacrum. So your sacrum is the lowest part of your back right before your butt. I try to find it so that my butt is hanging off the block, but anything that's a part of my back is definitely on the block. Not sure if you can see that. Cool. And if you're like this, this feels great. I feel like I want a little bit more of a back bend. Then you can grab for your second block, place it once again on the lowest height, and just stack it up on top. Cool. From here, find your eyes, come to a close. And if you don't have blocks with you, you can just come into a Shavasana-like position. We're going to end here. So It'll be a different version of Shavasana, but it'll also be very nice and relaxing. So don't worry, we're not gonna start doing butt work or something. So find whatever version of this with one or two blocks or no blocks feels the nicest. Hands can come down with palms face up on either side, or they can be on your person. And lengthen out your right leg. So your right heel is on the ground, right toe is face up towards the sky. And just breathe. Feeling an opening in the front of the right leg. Noticing your breath, eyes are closed. Then place your right foot back down underneath the knee and then straighten out the left leg, left heel down into the ground, left toes facing up towards the sky. Still breathing. Notice if you're gripping anywhere, shoulders, hands, nose. Breathe into the places where you feel tension. And then place your left foot back underneath your knee. And now straighten both legs out. And if you try it and it feels kind of pinchy in your low back, then you can 
just go back to having your feet underneath your knees. But if it feels nice and all you feel is a nice opening in the front of the legs, then feel free to stay. Slowing down your breath, calming the nervous system. Placing your feet back underneath your knees and then lift your knees up, lift your legs up towards the sky. So if you don't have blocks, you can still just lie in Shavasana and just keep breathing and letting your body melt into the ground. Otherwise, if you're on a block, you can lift um, your legs up towards the sky. So you can have a slight bend in your knees. And this is another version of an inversion because um, your legs are above your head. In a headstand, your legs are also above your head. So this just reverses the blood flow, feels nice after a long day. You can rock your low back from right to left or circle it around if that feels nice. And then bring your heels in towards your seat. Place your right foot down, place your left foot down. Lift your butt up a little bit. If you have two blocks, take out one. Bring your back back down. Coming out of the back bend slowly. And if you have one block, lift your seat, move the block, stick your butt out as you lower down to the ground. Once again, bring your feet as wide as the mat. Knees knock in towards one another, constructive rest. Constructive rest is one of the best um, back neutralizers there is. So if you do a back bend or if you do a forward fold before going into a pose that's the opposite, um, try to do a back neutralizer like constructive rest purely for safety reasons. On your next exhale, let your legs go, let your arms go. You're like a flat Stanley, just lying on the ground. Take one deep breath here. And then whichever way you wanna to roll to, you can roll over to the right or left side using the upper arm as a pillow. Keeping your eyes closed, pressing yourself up. Come back into the cross-legged pose that we had in the beginning, keeping your eyes closed if you can. Hands can come face up on your knees. Open and available and receptive to all the energy that you just brought into your body and into the space around you. Relaxing your toes, relaxing your feet. Let the shoulders fall back and down. Take a few breaths here. And then bring your hands to press it together at the center of your chest. One deep inhale and exhale all together. So take a normal breath, inhaling and exhaling. And deepest breath of the day, inhaling through the nose. Hold it at the top. And exhaling out the mouth, huge sigh. Come back to your normal breath. Gratitude to your bodies, to your mind, to your breath for all it did for you in the past hour. Namaste. Yay. Good job, guys.
That was fun. Thank you. Yay. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Hannah. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you, Dana. Yay. Thanks, Anna. Did you?